it is refraction by spherical lenses last time we had learned about spherical mirrors and then the phenomenon of refraction here before starting the topic i will explain you what is lens actually now people you wear spectacles in order to read clearly and also watchmaker use one magnifying glass so that he can see the small small parts uh, clearly now what are those things means the glasses which are used in spectacles and even a magnifying glass is these all are the lenses definitely there are different different types of lenses now here i will explain you what is lens lens is a glass or lens is a material made up of two lenses it means two spherical mirrors or one spherical mirror and one plane lens here means here suppose this is your plane lens and for this if you are attaching one convex lens this is a convex lens we call it as convex lens now if you are using two convex lenses side by side this is known as double convex lens in the market we have also double concave lens like this two surfaces are attached like this so lens is a material having one or two spherical lenses are attached there so here we will study refraction by means refraction through these lenses when light ray passes through them now here we will study some characteristics if you remember in the spherical mirrors we had learned about focus pole principal axis also center of curvature and all now here for lenses also these characters are applicable that i will explain you here suppose this is your convex lens i know this is double convex lens but still we call it as convex lens this is the central line of the convex lens and at the center you have one point this is the center of the convex lens it is known as origin hence it is denoted by point o here now suppose we are taking principal axis passing through this origin then if we are passing light rays parallel to the principal axis in this way you will observe that for a convex lens these all rays converges in a single point like this so this point acts as focus of the convex lens so now in this case i am transferring the rays from left to right similarly you can transfer the rays from right to left for a convex lens because from the both the sides the convex lens is similar so for every convex or concave lens we have two centers of curvature and two principal focus so suppose this is f2 on the left hand side i will have f1 and also center of curvature so here it will be c1 and here we will have c2 here and we can call the upper 
structure of the convex lens as n m here now no need to explain this is our principal axis x x dash here and you can see in the convex lenses the rays which are traveling parallel to the principal axis converges in a single point at principal focus hence convex lenses are also known as converging lenses the meaning of the word converge means the, all the rays will be accumulated or all the rays will be incident on a single point after refraction now if you remember all uh, for a convex mirror the rays was reflecting from the same side the refraction was not taking place here we can see because of the convexness we have the phenomenon of refraction rays are coming from left and get refracted on the right hand side also they get converged at a single point so convex lenses are known as con uh, converging lenses now let us do for concave lenses now here suppose this is are concave lens again definitely for convex lens similarly con concave lens also have origin now we will draw principal axis here like this again we will take rays of light parallel to the principal axis now you will see that these rays will get refracted but you will observe that these rays are diverged and it seems to be diverged from a single point that point is nothing but principal focus of the concave lens like this so you can see in the case of concave lens all the rays which are traveling parallel to the principal axis are diverged means they got separated in different different direction so that's why concave lens are called diverging lenses now you can perform this similar phenomena by passing the light rays from right hand side to left hand side so similar to convex lens concave lens also have two principal focus and two centers of curvature so we name them as f1 f2 and c1 c2 respectively now let us move forward i will give you some example here in your school laboratory you must have convex lens or uh, simply you can take the magnifying glass that watchmaker use or you must have a magnifying glass at your own home also you can take it just put a paper on a ground and hold the magnifying glass below the when where sun rays are coming means and adjust the magnifying glass so that you will get a sharp light point on the paper hold for some time what you will see you will observe the similar result that we had studied for the spherical lenses means that light point will start burning firstly with smoke and after with means after some time it will catch fire so this happens because our magnifying glass is actually a convex lens so all the sun rays which are traveling parallel falling parallel on the magnifying glass 
get converged in a single point and because of heat energy is concentrated in that single point the paper start burning here so this is the phenomenon for convex lens if you are performing the experiment with concave lens you will not get the similar result because for the concave lens all the rays are diverged so the burning of the paper will not happen there so now let us move to our next part now we will study the ray diagrams for convex as well as concave lens if you remember lastly for the spherical mirrors we had performed the same thing but the thing was that was with spherical mirrors and here we are taking lenses now in the first case first case of ray diagram is light rays are traveling light rays are parallel to principal axis here you can see means here we have a convex lens this is the origin of the convex lens and this is our principal axis say x x dash and condition is that incident light is traveling parallel to principal axis like this then how will it get reflected or refracted so you will see suppose these are principal focus of the lens then you will observe that light get refracted through principal focus here like this so this is the first condition for convex lens similarly if i will draw it for concave lens you will observe the same phenomena i will show you how this is the origin and this is the central line now i will draw the principal axis here it is x x dash in this case also light is traveling parallel to principal axis suppose this is my principal focus first focus and this is my second then you will observe that light will get reflected just like it is diverged from the principal focus like this but here you will draw dotted line because it appears to be diverged from the principal focus but definitely it is not entering focus anymore now in the next case second case we have now incident light is already traveling through focus of the lens so i will write passing through focus so now again i have convex lens with origin o principal axis we will draw passing through it x x dash two focus we have f1 f2 now condition is that your incident light is traveling through focus we can say like this so how will it refracted so you will observe that it will refracted means it will refracted 
on other side and it will be parallel to your principal axis now for concave lens you will observe same phenomena here is your concave lens with origin o again we have principal axis passing through origin x x dash now two foci f1 f2 now suppose your incident light is like this means it is appear to be traveling in the direction of focus of the lens but definitely it will not go to f2 it will touch the central line of the lens and after refraction what you will observe that it will travel parallel to principal axis like this now we have the third case in the third case the condition is that suppose your incident right is directly entering the origin means it is traveling through origin so how will be the ray diagram suppose this is my convex lens with origin o we have principal axis here x x dash with focus f1 f2 now according to our condition light ray is incident on this origin that is center of the lens see i am talking center of the lens here we are not talking about center of the curvatures so incident light is like this so you will observe that when it enters to the center it will directly pass to different side without any change of path like this similar phenomenon is applicable for concave lens here we have this concave lens with principal axis x x dash again we have two foci similarly from the previous case light is passing through origin and it will get refracted on the other direction without any change of path so these are the three path diagrams definitely we are studying this because these ray diagrams we will require in the next part to draw means to study the formation of image if we change the position of the object while studying the image formed by convex as well as concave lenses now before that i would like to mention one part here if actually see you can see whether it is convex or concave it is made up of two uh, means two spherical lenses so both the lenses have their own center of curvature and if you remember the center of curvature was that point it was the center of the sphere of which our lens is a part or our lens is a arc so here suppose this was the sphere of center c and we are taking only this part means suppose this is our convex lens this part i am talking so that this point center c was the center of curvature 
right now if i'm taking the full convex lens here of the same sphere then you can see this distance means distance between the two poles of the lens is very smaller than this radius of the sphere we can say or radius of the lens we can say so in this case this type of lens is known as thin lenses there are some lenses they have this distance between the two poles of the lenses greater than the radius of the individual lens so in that case those lenses are thick lenses so this is the difference between thin lens and thick lens definitely this is because of the lesser diameter or thicker diameter of the lens in this case no more spending your energy and money on coaching classes or missing classes for rain for rally and any other nonsense subjects covered by multiple teachers with repeat telecast doubts concepts applications no problem all explained through great and significant animation so sit back comfortably in your home and watch study spectrum tv channel formation by convex lenses now here i will show you experimental setup now suppose this is the table on which you will perform the experiment uh, suppose in your school's laboratory you have one stand like this from the center of the stand suppose you will mark the reading means you will adjust the center and in the exactly center you will adjust your convex lens like this so this line will act as principal axis of the convex lens now suppose you will mark two foci of convex lens and two centers of curvature of the convex lens and now we will start performing the experiment by suppose putting an object here suppose in this case also we will use a candle and on in this side you can use the screen this we will remove the stand after setting so this particular thing will act as now screen means your image will formed on the screen here so let us start forming the images for different different position positions of the object in the first case our image formation is while position means positioning our object we at infinity means we are placing our object at infinity from the lens so suppose at infinity is the first case now this is our convex lens with origin o this is the principal axis and far from the lens suppose this is the object of which we have to obtain the image then you will observe that now we will point
focus now you know that the center of the curvature means radius of a lens is double of the focus so here c1 is my center of the curvature again this is also 2f1 because this distance is double of f1 so this we can mark it as 2f1 and here also we have second center of curvature so that will be 2f2 so suppose the rays passing through the object are incident on the lens parallel to principal axis like this means your all the rays incident on the lens parallel to principal axis then you must remember the ray diagram first case when the rays travel means when the incident rays travel parallel to the lens they all will converge in a single point that is the focus of the lens so the all the rays will pass through the focus which lie opposite side of the incident rays like this so you can see here all the rays are passing through the focus so your image is formed at the focus but it is point image and it is highly diminished now whether it is inverted or erect that we will see later on because from this figure it is difficult to show so this is the first case when our object is placed at distance infinity now let us consider second case in the second case our object is just beyond the center of the curvature from one side means we are keeping our object at finite distance but it is beyond the center of the curvature so in the second case our object is from beyond c that is center of the curvature of the lens so let us draw the diagram again this is the contact lens this is the convex lens that we are using here now this is the principal axis with origin o again focus suppose i will write c2 here and here 2f2 i will write similarly f1 here 2f2 here and c2 on upper side so this is the convex lens now you will place your object here like this suppose name of the object is a b so now ray from a will travel parallel to principal axis and fall on the lens again the second ray you have it will pass from the origin and as you know the point which which passes through the origin the ray which passes through the origin it get refracted on other side without change of path like this you will get and your another point will travel through another ray will travel through definitely the focus of the lens like this so here you can see your both the rays 
are meeting each other and you will get image like this so you can say this is the inverted image so we will name it as a dash b dash here so now we will see the next case now you can see the size of the image is lesser than the size of the object also it is the inverted image so now the in the third case we will place our object at the center of curvature so on the left hand side we are putting the object so your object now is at c1 so let us draw the diagram we have convex lens here with its origin o then again principal axis passing through it x x dash now if you are drawing this diagram in your notebook make sure that we will draw points means point f1 f2 2f1 2f2 at equidistances so that your ray diagram will not get wrong so suppose here i'm taking these points this is my f1 this is 2f1 that is it is also c1 then here f2 2f2 which is c2 here so now here in this case we are placing our object on c1 like this suppose name of the object is a b so one ray will come parallel to the principal axis like this and again the next ray will pass through the origin like this and the ray which is parallel will come from focus of the lens Label it properly. 
So you can see I have convex lens with two foci, two centers of curvature and principal axis. Now according to our condition we are placing our object in between C1 and F1. That is between the focus and center of curvature. So again Here is A and here is your B. So, what you will see here, one ray will again travel parallel to the principal axis and one ray again will travel through the origin like this. And it will get refracted on other side without changing the path. And the ray which is parallel to principal axis will came out from focus like this. So you will observe that you will get the image. here. You will see that the size of the object is smaller than the size of the image. Means you will get the image beyond the center of curvature that is beyond C2 and here the image will be enlarged and also it will be again inverted image. Means like this you will get A dash B dash. Now, in the next case, we will place our object at point F1. So, let us draw the diagram. Now suppose this is F1, this is 2F1, that is it is C1, this is F2, this is 2F2, that is it is C2. So according to our condition, your object is placed at this point, like this. A B. So, again similarly first ray will travel parallel and the second ray will pass through origin like this. The ray which was parallel will travel through focus like this. Now you will see that in this case your both the rays will be parallel to each other and they will not intersect each other. So that means your image is formed at infinity. The image definitely will be inverted image. Now in the last case we have means we are placing our object between this origin and focus. 
so between o and f one we will say so again we have convex lens here like this now you will see on the right hand side two rays are going apart but if you will extend this sides you will observe that your image is formed beyond the mirror like this Here I will erase for this. As you can see, your image is formed beyond the mirror or inside the mirror, and it is enlarged image, and also it is not the real image; it is virtual image. A dash, B dash. But while drawing in the notebook, you will see that your image is formed beyond the center of curvature. C1 here. So these all are the cases we are studying when the means position of the object is changed, how image is formed. Now we will tabulate our readings and similar experiment or similar uh, image formation we will study for concave lenses here. <laughs>